On today's show, what does our top 32 look like for the 2024 NHL Draft? We unveil the Dauber Prospects Top 32 Rankings on today's episode of Locked On NHL Prospects. You are Locked On NHL Prospects, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome back to Locked On NHL Prospects, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. On this podcast, we bring down everything prospects related for you five days a week, Monday to Friday. I'm Heidi Kalakesh, Director of North American Scouting for Dauber Prospects, joined by Sebastian High, Head Scout and Director of European Scouting for Dauber Prospects. And on today's show, we'll be breaking down our top 32 rankings for the 2024 NHL Draft. We'll start off with the top 10, uh, the top 10 prospects in the draft. Quite easy, quite simple. We love that. Uh, in our second segment, we'll look at picks 11 through 20. Uh, and in our third segment, we'll break down picks 21 through 32. And all throughout this uh, this episode, we'll give you kind of analysis on each of these players. We have a lot of prospect profiles for these, for these players out on the, the, the channel as well. So if you want more in-depth stuff where we break down really the details, the skating, the, you know, um, the, the, the decision-making habits, tools, all that good stuff. Uh, it's all on the channel. Make sure to check it out. But on today's show, we'll keep it short and sweet, really simple. Give you the uh, two cents breakdown on these players, talk about their upside, that kind of thing. But before I get into any of that, today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers can get up to $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's 150 bucks if your team wins. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. As usual, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like and subscribe. Leave us a comment letting us know what you think of the episode, what you think of our rankings. And if you're listening on your favorite podcast, Podcasting platform. Make sure to make it to leave us a rate and review. That helps the channel out a lot. And make sure to make us your first listen of the day. Uh, so let's get things started here with our breakdown of pick number one in our rankings. That's quite easy and simple. There's no doubt here, right, Sebastian? There really isn't. There has not really been a, a very long conversation uh, internally at Dubber Prospects this season about that number one overall slot. Every scout that has watched Mac and Celebrini has championed his cause at number one. And uh, while I do think that the gap between two and three has also widened this season uh, with, with the next player that we'll talk about really entrenching himself at number two, he's not really been able to, to, to contend with Celebrini over the course of this season. I mean, Celebrini is incredibly refined for a 17-year-old uh, who played the entire NCAA season as a 17-year-old. He only turns 18 in like June or July. And uh, and he was the best player in college hockey this season, winning the Hobie B Baker Trophy. So uh, he is a transition beast, uh, really intelligent off puck, ridiculous shot, really dynamic with the puck on a stick, uh, adds a ton of value in the defensive zone as well. And he's really refined that, that area of his game over the course of the season. Like, I see no reason to to pick any player other than Celebrini at number one, personally. Yeah, I mean, he's a no-brainer. His season with Boston University. I mean, we're talking about a Hobie Baker winner uh, in his freshman year. Just a ridiculous talent. And yeah, there's no doubt at this point, it's, it's Celebrini at one. And anyone who says otherwise uh, has lost their marbles. Uh, so let's move on to number two with Ivan Demidov, um, the Russian winger out of SKA uh, St. Petersburg. Is it St. Petersburg? I think it is, yes. right? Indeed. Yeah, St. Petersburg. I always get SK and CSKA confused, but yeah, it's SK St. Petersburg. Uh, he's been playing in the MHL this year, the whole year, and it's not fair. I mean, it's just not fair. He's he's way too good for that level. Um, just been dominating as of late. He's been the best player in the playoffs for them as well. Just an absolute machine offensively. The best stick handler I've seen in the past five drafts. Um, the the ability to kind of deceive players to move around them in transition, just so shifty, so elusive, and above all, so creative. And that doesn't just show up in his stick handling ability. He's a creative passer. He's actually a creative shooter as well. The way that he moves players out of position, draws players in, shoots through them. Like the puck skills are out of this world. And he's got a sound base of the defensive tools as well. Like he's not a slouch defensively. He definitely puts in effort. I don't think the... The understanding is all there. Like sometimes he does seem a bit lost, especially in D zone coverage. That's pretty typical for MHL wingers. You know, we rarely see MHL wingers as, you know, you know, above par, you know, defensemen. Um, but yeah, overall, I think that with Demidov, the efforts there, the energies there, the creativity is there. He's got all the sound foundations that I think were bigger questions, for example, with Matt Faye Mishkov. Mishkov had a bit more of a muddy projection um, with his overall tools, habits, uh, especially off the puck. 
But with Demidov, it's just such a sound foundation that actually helps him get more puck touches. So yeah, he's our second overall pick, no doubt there. Moving on to third, I think this is where um, the debate really starts, yeah, internally at least, in Dauber prospects. At third overall, we have Caden Lindstrom. And Lindstrom is... I mean, he's a big body, but that's not all there is to his game. He's so skilled, so creative. He's a decent skater. Um, the thing with these bigger guys at younger ages is that you're usually, they're usually pretty raw in terms of habits, and that's certainly the case for Lindstrom. But there's still a decent couple of things that he does that get, helps him get more puck touches. And habits improve with more puck touches. They improve with more t- offensive zone time. They improve with more reps, right? And when you have a player who does a, a lot of little good things right, like Caden Lindstrom, the habits will come later because he's getting so many puck touches in so many good areas. And he's just so physical, so violent. Off the ice, he's an amazing person by all accounts. Like, there's so much to love here um, with Caden Lindstrom. And that's what makes him our third overall pick. At fourth overall, we have Zeev Booyam. And, and I'll let you talk me through why Zeev Booyam is our top-ranked defenseman in the 2024 NHL draft. He's a treat to watch, eh? Oh, he really is. Like, this is probably one of the most slippery players in this draft class. There are many situations every single game where he seems to be cornered by opposition and he finds his way out of there with possession of the puck and just launching a counterattack. He's a really strong playmaker from the back end and a real breakout artist as well when pressured uh, on retrievals. Uh, He's consistently making the right decisions. He's really intelligent. And while, like, this... The skating mechanics, the stride mechanics specifically, could still use some tweaking. He's very agile, and that's something that really allows his game to tick. And on top of that, he's just one of the most effective two-way forces that we've seen in terms of like NCAA defensemen in the past five, ten years uh, among yeah. draft eligibles. And uh, he really did just lead the University of Denver to the NCAA Frozen Four Championship, and he was the crux of that team he was their star player he was the best player on their team he was the creator of that second goal the two nothing goal against boston college with just a ridiculous zone entry and spinorama assist right upon entering the zone uh this is a creative dynamic defenseman who has is, is a comfortable NHL projection in my eyes. Like he's, he will be an NHLer and his fallback game will be like a transition beast on like a second or third pairing. But there's, there is that first pairing like power play quarterback upside in this player. And he is tantalizing. For sure. And yeah, by the way, he's uh, average size 5'11, 180. Uh, you know, again, he broke down this game perfectly. Uh, but to speed things up a tiny bit, we'll move on to number five. We've got Zane Parekh, our second defenseman off the board. Just so creative and dynamic offensively. He's so composed as well. It can be a weakness at times. I think his defensive game is it's not the best, but I think it's been overblown in terms of how weak it is. Uh, some people are calling it abysmal. I don't agree. Like There's decent elements there. Um, but yeah, just so creative, so elusive from the blue line, a right-handed defenseman. Um, those are our, those are always at a premium at the draft and he's got the highest upside among defensemen for me. Um, there's a, there's a world in which he becomes a point per game defenseman. I don't think it's as likely, but it's possible. Uh, moving on to number six, we have Berkeley Catton, the, uh, winger out of the Spokane Chiefs in, in the WHL. Um, a fantastic season for him above a uh, hundred points, but he's been playing like half the game for them. Um, Caden Lindstrom has less points, uh, but in less games, obviously, but has a higher point per point per minute ratio. Um, to give you an idea, Catton's playing all the time. He's basically the only player on that team that's able to produce at a consistent regular rate. Um, but yeah, just so dynamic, so creative, just always pushing the pace, always moving around players. Like, just probably the most dynamic player after Michael Celebrini and Ivan Dimitrov in this draft. Um, then at seven, we have Archam Levshinov of the Michigan State uh, Warriors. Uh, a fantastic, big, mobile right-handed defenseman. Um, it's honestly tight between four and seven. We could have put him in any order, and I would have been fine with it. Uh, Levshinov is a kind of a, a really solid back-end force there. He's always pushing up the, the ice, always joining rushes as a fourth attacker. Sometimes that gets him in trouble. He doesn't have the best decision-making, but uh, the, the foundation of tools is amazing, and he's a hard worker on and off the ice. So there's a lot to love here. He's probably going to be going second or third in the draft. Like, I don't think teams are going to let him slip a lot. Um, then at number eight, we have TJ Ginla. And this was a debate internally, right? Like, Ginla rocketed up our rankings and ended up at eighth overall. But there's a lot to love here, right? 
there's a lot to love and we, we were both a part of the team that was pushing for him in the top 10 like we, we did not want him slipping out to the top 10 range uh he is a sharp shooter in the whl he scored uh, 47 goals through 64 games but it, it is his board game his intensity his grit that makes him so projectable and exciting to us he is incredibly engaged on both sides of the puck defensively he takes himself out of place because he works too hard and like over skates lanes which is a problem that you kind of want to have in a raw defensive forward at this stage yeah. of the game and uh he's completely like like overhauled his handling and his playmaking game this season as well he's become the primary offensive driver for the Kelowna Rockets leapfrogging Andrew Crystal this is a very exciting talent and one of the youngest players in the draft class too yeah, absolutely. And that brings us to number nine. We have Konsa Hellenius, who is uh, a fantastically smart uh, center who's playing with Eucharist this year. He's played in their top six all year. He's been putting up ridiculous numbers. Pretty average size at about 5'11", 180 as well, but uses that very, very well um, along the boards. Gets off the boards really well. One of the best defensive centers in this draft. Uh, the upside's kind of limited due to a lack of kind of a standout offensive tool, but the intelligence carries him throughout his game. It's it's really the the bread and butter of, of what makes him so um, so effective in the uh, in the Finnish Liga, which is not an easy league to kind of dominate at such a young age. Uh, and then to close off our top ten, we have Sam Dickinson at tenth. He kind of slipped down our rankings because of some issues with decision making. Um, isn't always the most intelligent kind of uh, you know he, he doesn't really guide play as intelligently as other defensemen in this draft. Um, and yeah, I mean overall the tools really carry him. He's big. He's one of the best skaters in the draft as well. Uh, a left-handed defenseman at about six foot two, does a bit of everything pretty well. But really, the standout is the rush defending and the end zone defending. He's physical. He puts you through the boards. But his offensive game, he's starting to explore it and kind of learn a bit from it. So there, there's room for upside here with Dickinson. But I think at the end of the day, he ends up as a kind of a, a second pair defenseman. So that wraps things up for our first segment where we break down the top ten. Uh, we're going to get through 11 uh, picks 11 through 20 in our second segment here. Uh, but just before we get into that, a quick word from our sponsors at FanDuel and Policy Genius. It's playoff time in the NBA and NHL. Baseball's in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, win or lose. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on an app that's safe, secure, and easy to use. I know I personally am always a really big fan of that single game parlays, especially if you're attending a playoff game in person. You want to do everything you can to make it as memorable and exciting a night as humanly possible. And with the NHL playoffs in, in full swing and the physical game at peak intensity, going for the over on the hits counter is possibly not the worst idea in the world. What are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Life insurance is such an important safety net for you and your family. Uh, and Policy Genius is the best place to get uh, to get shopping on some good life insurance policies, to compare prices, to compare coverages, and find the best source for you. Policy Genius helps you compare your options from top companies, and their team of licensed experts is on hand to help talk you through it. Uh, you can talk to a team of award-winning agents who will walk you through the process step-by-step, step, and you can easily compare quotes that way from America's top insurers in just a few clicks to find your lowest price. Your work life insurance policy may not offer enough protection for your family's needs, and even worse, it may not come with you if you leave your job. And that's where Policy Genius kicks in. They find you the best policy for the right prices. They give you unbiased advice from their support team. They have no incentive to recommend one insurer over the other, so you can trust their guidance. And thousands of five-star reviews on Google and Trustpilot from customers who found the best fit for their needs uh, helps you stay um, reassured as well. So check life insurance off your to-do list in no time with Policy Genius. You have to, all you have to do is head to policygenius.com slash locked on NHL or click the link in the description below for your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. So visit policygenius.com slash locked on NHL. Alrighty, so moving on to our second segment, we'll be talking about uh, picks 11 through 20. Let's get through these real quick. We'll start at 11, and we have got uh, Liam Greentree at 11th overall. Um, 
Liam Green, is really interesting. I mean, he's a player who at the start of the year, I saw more of as a sharpshooter as kind of your move off the puck, find a pocket of space and shoot kind of player. Um, the skating was obviously a weakness from the start. I don't think that's really changed, but what's changed over the past kind of four to six months, I'd say is how more, how much more comfortable he got thinking of the game ahead and passing the puck. And that's when you really realized how smart this player is. Every single decision he makes serves to improve the condition of the puck. He's not the type of player who fires off passes into high danger areas just to kind of connect with a teammate and get the puck in the back of the net. He's comfortable making a pass that will extend possession and create three, four scoring chances rather than just one dangerous chance and then the puck's out of the zone, you know? So th that decision-making, that awareness is really good. The skating does need to improve, but I think if it does, you've got a top six player here, almost guaranteed. Like, there's a lot to love in this game. Um, but at 12th overall, we've got a, a bit of a different projection here with Michael Bronsek Newgard. Um, we did a prospect profile on him, but talk me through his game real quick, size, handedness, and what kind of what the, what the crux of his game is. Yeah, so MBN, as we always call him in our meetings, uh, for for the sake of, of keeping things concise, uh, is a six foot two <laughs> right shot winger who is has the most refined defensive game among all forwards in this draft class. Really intense, uh, physically mature, uh, really intelligent in his positioning on both sides of the puck offensively has a really powerful and dangerous release, but also gets to the, to the net front to just be a real pest in that area. But uh, yeah, like, like our, our 10 to 11 to 15 range is really like in, in our meeting consisted of just one big debate between five wingers. Uh, so yeah. there's a lot of like, like tight arguments in this range, uh, but, but because of Brent Nygaard's like real refined game and his ability to already play NHL minutes immediately off, off the bat, uh, it was, was a different, a difference making factor but at 13 we have another uh european winger with a refined defensive game in igor chernishov uh, this is a player who has a bit less of the the intensity of brandsek nigard but he brings a higher level of handling skill and goal scoring acumen he has a really dangerous release he's a six foot two really fluid handler and skater uh, very much in that mold of the, the modern European power forward. And he's really been very effective in KHL minutes uh, in terms of sparking the breakout with uh, with control as well as uh, playing really controlled defensive games. Uh, he He's positionally very sound. He's constantly plugging himself into the most dangerous passing lanes, applying pressure at the right moment. And uh, yeah, there's a lot to like in his game. But at 14 and 15, we have two very dynamic, offensive wingers from from the usa who both have a, a, their fair share of detractors right yeah absolutely and this was another big debate mainly between me and our ushl scout uh david sod uh but to break things down at 14 we have trevor conley a winger out of the tri-city storm in the ushl um very dynamic offensively but you know that thing i mentioned with liam green tree about making the right pass to extend offense's own possessions rather than going for the high danger chance it's the complete opposite with Trevor Conley. He's always going for the high danger chance. He's always looking to be either the goal scorer or the goal scorer or primary assister on every play, and that makes him a bit more difficult to project because he's not a player who really extends possession in a meaningful way. He doesn't really make the smart plays; just makes the most dangerous plays. Um, so very much kind of pond hockey ish. I've liked the effort as of late. The energy that's what places him above the guy we have at 15 so far. Um, is that it brings a bit more off the puck. Uh, but at 15, we have Cole Eiserman. Uh, which is a bit low compared to others. I mean, I've seen him in top threes, top fives. Uh, we're not sold at Dauber Prospects. There's a lot to not like about his game. He's a fantastic goal scorer. He's the best goal scorer in this draft, and it's not even close. Like, his shot is ridiculous. His off-puck movement in the offensive zone is ridiculous. But he doesn't bring much outside of that, and that makes him kind of difficult to project. Like, the defensive game is honestly abysmal. Um, the playmaking game, I mean, he doesn't really pass. And when he does choose to pass it's the wrong path. So it's not like he's, he's a hard player to project in that sense. Uh, but then at 16 and 17, we had two completely different defensemen. Uh, and they're both on your side, uh, both European defensemen. Talk me through their games and why we have one above the other. Yeah, this was also a bit of a debate. Uh, and, and in the end, I, I went with the player that I've been uh, more enamored with over the course of this season in Alphonse Frey at 16th overall. This is higher than he appears on most boards, but this is a highly intelligent, uh, mobile playmaking, puck moving defenseman. He's 
really intelligent positionally. He's very dynamic with the puck on his stick, high end handler, one of the best movers, if not the best mover in this entire draft class, really high end skater. Uh, and, and uh, one of the more active playmakers from the blue line among defensemen in this entire draft class. He's played this entire season in his J 20 competition, and he's a little bit undersized at six feet and 187 pounds, but, uh, but, but, but there's this high level of intelligence in this game that I think will translate wonderfully to the NHL and his defensive game is built on really intelligent calculated stick work and positioning and while he still needs to work on his physical on, on his physicality certainly before making the leap to the NHL I think there's a lot to work with in this player the next one is the polar opposite in Anton Salayev this is probably pretty low uh, for his ranking among most outlets at 17th but uh, while he's a six foot seven left shot defenseman, over two hundred pounds, just dominant physically, has the, the longest reach among def- among any player in this draft class by a decent margin, and he can close his gaps in about a stride or two and cover uh, like a, an insane amount of ice. But despite mm-hmm. those really impressive physical tools, we've had a bit more pause with the mental aspects of his game. There's been a lot of hesitation in his on-puck game. He can be a bit of a deer in the headlights to puck carrier. He ha- hasn't really shown too much upside as a puck mover or an offensive force from the blue line. And we think that might limit him a little bit as a like number three or number four, like defensive and transition defending specialist on the blue line. Whereas yeah. other players in the draft class that show a bit more of that on puck skill could really elevate themselves in that top pairing role. But at 18, we have a player who also has some really impressive physical tools, but it's kind of the inverse of Salayev in terms of it all being on the offensive side of the puck rather than defensively, right? Yeah, absolutely. And that, that's exactly right with Carter Yagamchuk, who's our 18th pick. He's a right shot defenseman, uh, really athletic, uh, pretty big. I think he's like 6'2", 190 pounds, something like that. Um, the athleticism is ridiculous. I mean, the physical tools are insane. And he's one of the most, um, I mean, creative defensemen in this draft. Like, he 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 will push through players who will pull off deeks you couldn't expect. Like, there, there's a lot to love about the offensive game. But with Yakumchuk, the one constant is the decision-making is all out of whack. And with a player who gets the puck that often, who skates forward that often because of how often he gets the puck in transition – you know, improving that ability to think the game while moving backwards is going to be a concern because he's not really getting reps in those scenarios. So that's a concern with me with Yakumchuk. But if that improves, we're talking about a top four defenseman for sure with the, with the level of tools that he has. Um, at 19, we have Andrew Basha, who's probably the paciest player in this draft. The amount of pace he brings to the game is ridiculous. He's constantly pushing around opponents. He's about average sized um, and uh, a left shot player, I believe. And yeah, I mean, the the game with him is just, it's all about upping the pace and then thinking better at that pace than everyone else. And he does that really well. Uh, He's been playing, you know, alongside Caden Lindstrom with Medicine Hat and has been really good with Lindstrom out of the lineup with injury. He's actually upped his game and kind of taken that team by control. So that's something to love about his game. And to close things off for our top 20, we have Michael Hage at 20th. Um, You know, I'm a big fan. You're a big fan. Uh, Dave is a big fan. Just a really smart, really fast, really skilled player. Like the the level of skill is really what stands out. The handling skill is great. He's a great scorer. He's a great passer. There's just a sound base of offensive tools around which you can build a better game. You can improve the defensive acumen. You can improve the physicality. Like those are things that you can work on. But the skill level is just the base of it is so high that there's a lot to love here with Michael Hage. But that wraps things up for our top 20. We'll get into picks 21 through 32 in just a second, just before a quick from our sponsors at game time. If you're looking to buy cheap tickets last minute to any event, Game Time is the best place to get that done. Game Time is a great ticketing app that allows you to get tickets up until the last minute before an event, and sometimes even an hour after it starts. And it's not just for games. It's for anything that requires tickets. Comedy, theater, anything that requires tickets, they've got you covered. Um, they've got last-minute deals that help you save up to 60% off by buying last-minute tickets for sports, concerts, comedy, theater, all that good stuff. Uh, my favorite are zone deals, where you pick the section and Game Time picks a seat, and that gives you about a 10% savings margin. And the game time uh, lowest price guarantee makes sure that you get the best price. If you find a same a ticket in the same section and row for less than what game time has to offer, game time credits you 110% of the difference. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use code locked on NHL for $20. 
$10 off your first purchase. Terms of people, just create an account and use code locked on NHL for $20 off. So download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. All righty, so let's close things off with picks 21 through 32. And let's go through these pretty quick. We've got profiles on most of these guys on the uh, on the uh, on the channel itself. So I think we can start at 21 here with our uh, with our Nikita Artemanov, who was a uh, player who was a bit higher up in the rankings last time around. Uh, dropped a tiny bit, but it's by no fault of his own. It's just the players ahead of him got a lot better. Um, just a really really intense player, right? Highly intense, uh, really capable playmaker, uh, constantly, like, like the high motor is really the, the, the core tenet of his game. It allows everything else to tick. And there's definitely a lot of room to, to grow as a playmaker and an offensive driver, but he's played this entire season uh, with Torpedo Novgorod in the KHL. And earlier on this season, he's getting a bit more power play minutes. He was playing more consistently on the second line. And as the year wore on, his role decreased a little bit, which meant that he wasn't able to flash the offensive side of his game quite as much yeah. as, as, as earlier on the season, but a really intelligent player that I think has a ton of room to grow and could also leap back into our top 20 by the time our final rankings come around but our 22nd yeah. player is uh one of your personal favorites a player that you've championed all season long and the one that that we called the most underrated player in the 2024 draft class in our uh player profile yeah absolutely uh Tarek parasak is the most intelligent player in this class uh at least at least top three for me one of the most intelligent in this class um Every decision he makes is just so solid. He anticipates the game five, six steps ahead. It's just ridiculous because he's not the most agile, the most you know quick player on his feet. So it's you know it's almost by necessity. But I think that if the right team gets a hold of him, a team that can improve his skating ability, you're unlocking true top six potential, maybe even top line potential. The odds are slim of top line potential, but I see it with the intelligence he has, the off-puck movement he has, the, the goal-scoring ability that he has. Like, there's so much to love here. Um, and at 23, we've got a bit of a different profile with Beckett Seneca. He's a lot more, um, I mean, he's a lot more uh, chaotic than Tarek Parasak. There's a lot less structure to his game. It mainly has to do with the fact that he grew, like, six inches in the past year. Like, this is well-documented at this point. He's still a bit uncoordinated and awkward, but the skill level is really high. Like, that's what really stands out. This is a player who... Once he figures out how big he is and how to use that that lankiness, uh, look out because the skill level's high. The passing, the handling, the shooting—it's all great. Uh, at 24, we have Teddy Stiga, who made a big jump in our rankings. Like this is a player who, um, at the start of the year was probably like in the top 75. Now he's in our top 25. Like that's a big jump in in our rankings, and it's it's for good measure. Like he's a Swiss Army knife. He does a bit of everything well, but the he's all he also has that big standout tool of playmaking ability. Like he's a great passer. And the games that he's played with Cole Eijeman, he plays off that playmaking role really well. In games where he plays with the likes of Camille Bitnarek and Brody Zemir and those kinds of guys, he's comfortable getting into that two-way role. So I like that versatility, but also that ability to to bring out that standout tool when he needs to. Um, at 25, we have Sacha Boisvert, who is a uh, center playing with Muskegon in the USHL. Uh, pretty decent-sized, uh, 6'2", 200-ish pounds. Um, and I, I like the power forward elements in this game. Like, he's going to... He's going to drop the shoulder. He's going to drive around you. He's going to drive the net. The skating needs to improve for sure, but there's a sound base of tools there. Um, but we get to two right-handed defensemen in your side of the pond in Europe there, um, and this is an interesting one. A lot of a lot of a lot of outlets have one above the other, but we have the opposite, right? Yeah, and it was an open debate between these two and a defenseman that's coming in at 29th on our board on the European side. But yeah. uh, at 26, we have Dominic Bedinka, a Czech uh, right shot defenseman. He's six foot three. He's well built, really mobile, uh, quite quite agile for his size. Quite a powerful stride as well. Moves around the ice really well. But uh, it's also like his breakout ability that, is, uh, that that has cemented him inside our first round at Dauber Prospects. He has a really good first pass. He always is looking for a dangerous stretch pass to make when he's going back uh, in his own zone on retrievals, but always has a very simple play in his back pocket when he's pressured. And it's one of the big reasons that he was trusted with uh, SHL minutes with the Malmö Redhawks, even when they were really fighting uh, to, to, to not uh, get rele relegated from the SHL towards the end of the season. Uh, he's quite intelligent. There's a limitation in the offensive tools, especially the handling. And uh, yeah, but but he's, he's a really reliable defensive force and he's a 
a profile of player that usually gets picked top 15 or top 20, and he might be available on day two of the draft. So I think there's high value with that player. And at 27, we have Adam Yerichek, who we really wish to have gotten more viewings on this season because he was such, such a wild card. And he struggled a lot in in his league games this season, playing professional competition in Czechia. Uh, but this is a very raw but elitely mobile uh, six foot two, one hundred sixty eight pound right shot defenseman, and uh, he also plays with violent aggression. He likes to hurt his opposition, and once he grows into his frame, that's going to be dominant potentially. But there's a real like erratic nature to his on puck decision making and can really be a deer in the headlights and the on puck skill has been against junior competition has shown at times yeah. and against professional competition has been rather weak so a real wild card could be a lot higher in our rankings but could also have fallen outside our first round completely but at 28 we have a little bit of a skilled spark plug from the whl right yeah, absolutely. Miguel Marquez is a player that I really tried to push ahead of 28, but uh, we settled on 28 with him. Uber skilled, really intense, um, brings a lot of energy, especially off the rush when he's carrying the puck. The one main constant issue with him has been the, the lack of consistency in terms of effort, but the last 10-ish games where his production's actually dropped, I've seen more intensity from him. Um, more consistent and energy, especially from him in, in those games. Um, at 29, though, we have Jesse Polkinen. Uh, the unicorn of this draft, in my opinion, yeah. six foot six, left shot defenseman. He's an overager, still made our first round. That tells you how unique he is. Great skater, really, really comfortable on the puck, which I think is the element that really makes his his game so unique. You rarely see a six foot six player this comfortable on the puck, um, but he really is. I mean, he, I've seen him pull off spinoramas in the Finnish Liga. Like that's not that's not something that happens uh, that. with six foot six 19 year olds. Uh, but moving on to number 30, if we have another Finnish player at, as um, in Emil Hemming, who is yes. um, I mean, he's probably going to go higher than this, right? Like probably top 20. <laughs> He probably will, and I, I don't necessarily disagree with that. Like, my range for him going into our meeting was 20 to 30, so this was the low end. He is a a, a real goal scorer, has a wicked release. He played this entire season in Liga with TPS, mm -hmm. and uh, in those games, he was playing almost exclusively fourth-line minutes, so he settled into like an energy-checking role and really developed his defensive game significantly as the year wore on. He's also quite a skilled player as a handler, and the playmaking game as shown some flashes of brilliance over the course of the season there's a lot to like in this game and the puck skills as a whole are very strong and uh, with the advent of uh, now a stronger off puck and defensive game there's a lot to like here yeah, for sure. And that's what makes Emil Hemming our 30th pick. To close things off, our final two picks of the draft are from my side of the pond. So let me talk about them real quick. Harrison Brunicky, a right hand, uh, Brunick, sorry, a right handed defenseman playing with the Kamloops Blazers in the WHL. Does a bit of everything right, but what really stands out with him is how, how much more frequently he's exploring his game with stick handling ability. You know, he, he's, he's starting to catch pucks and right off reception kind of moving to the inside of players and driving around them in the offensive zone he's carrying pucks in transition um kind of using his handling skill to get around players and again this is a right-handed defenseman um out of the whl who hasn't really put up that many points but it's by no fault of his own really i mean he's doing a lot of things right his teammates aren't converting the puck is, it doesn't go in and sometimes you have years like that um don't jump at the lack of production i think he has like 20 points in 60 games like that's not really first round value on its own but if you look at his game in isolation there is so much to love uh and to close things off at 32 we have our second paciest prospect in the 2024 nhl draft it is luke misa a center out of the mississauga steelheads in the ohl and yeah pace is the name of the game with him he, he does everything at a high speed I think he has uh, really high defensive value as well. He's able to get back to put on put in second and third efforts on the back check. The main issue with Misa is that he's undersized. He's like 5'10", 160, and you know, adding some weight to that frame will be essential. But when he you have a player who thinks and plays at the same speed, and that speed is so high, he's definitely worth a shout in the first round, in our opinions. I mean, he, he I think he's 70th among North American skaters on the NHL Central scouting list. That blows my mind. That makes no sense to me. Uh, but that wraps things up for today's show. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like and subscribe. Leave us a comment letting us know what you want us to talk about next. 
And if you're listening on your favorite podcasting platform, make sure to make us your first listen of the day and leave us a rating review. Uh, for your second listen of the day, make sure to check out Locked On Sports Today. They've got all your news and updates about what's going on around sports. Make sure you tune in tomorrow because we're going to continue our breakdown of our April NHL draft rankings at Dauber Prospects with uh, the second and third rounds, our personal favorites, a bunch of good stuff like that. But for today, this has been Hattie Kalakesh, Director of North, North American Scouting, and Sebastian Hyde, Director of European Scouting for Dauber Prospects. And we hope you tune in next time.